So, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about my philosophy of gaming. Well, before that, uh, we need some history. Back in the olden September of 1997, I was 12 years old. I was going to a convention with my dad. And this con, uh, never been to it before, uh, I'd been to other cons, just this was the first time for this one, they had a gaming area. And I, I'd never seen one of those before. I was, it was so cool. And the games, they were like nothing I had ever seen before. I probably spent at least a half an hour or more just watching people play. All the cool things. Now, my my Asperger's, uh, it, it wasn't diagnosed until 2014. So I, I took a long time just trying to figure out how to get invited to a game. They were just walk up and join for the most part. I never, it took me a while to figure it out. Um, so, part one of my philosophy of gaming. I always invite a new player in. They might not know how to join. It's important. Eventually, uh, the GM of the game I was watching invited me to join the next round that was about to start. Unsurprisingly, they were playing Settlers of Catan. You might have heard of it. Uh, they had modded it to have ten players instead of four. And that group, for probably several years, more than I know, before and after, they would show up at the start of the con, set up this round of Catan, and when the game ended, they'd start a new round, and they'd start a new round, and they'd start a new round for for 72 hours. And, you know, people would cycle in and out, me included. Um, it was just a huge, huge, ever-going game of Catan. Catan. Whatever. I don't really recall much of the rest of the day. But I didn't leave the table until it was time to go home at the end of it. And when I left, at the end of the day, the guy sitting next to me, up to me, he said, hey, hold on a second. He grabbed his backpack, and he gave me something out of it as I was leaving. It was a deck of magic cards. It was a black deck, all, um, you know, pretty low-end entry stuff. Um, the things I remember in it particularly, there was a Swamp Wraith and a Ragman. Um... Later at school, I, you know, I found the magic group and I started playing with them. But ironically, you know, if I hadn't randomly been invited to this game of Catan, I, I wouldn't be a magic player today. Which, you know, I spend a lot of time thinking about magic anymore, so. And who knows? Um, and in the end, this is a slight, this whole thing is a slight variation on my second rule of my gaming philosophy and is that I want the new player to play again. If they have fun, we win. You know, if they have fun, they will. And if they don't, they won't. And if we stop having new players in the games that we play, eventually we won't have new games. Well, anyway, uh, really in these games, these, you know, these big 10-player games and these big, uh, you know, the magic crowd when I went back to school, all that junk, you know, I really started picking up a lot of social skills in those games that I probably wouldn't have picked up anywhere else. You know, trading, dealing, politics at the table, it's all important, right? You know, more importantly, I learned table etiquette. You know, you you wait your turn, you do what you need to do, you know, you're polite to the next player. You know, I also saw plenty of people who, off the table, made it so no one wanted to play with them on the table. 
you know, over time, I have found a passion for teaching new players how to play games. And it pains me when I hear yet one more person in the industry being, shall we politely describe them as a fuckwit. And that's, you know, it's rule number three in the end. Is you, you need to be a good opponent. If, if you're someone who people want to play, then you'll get more games. And, and more games will happen. And, and I don't mean, you don't need to be, you know, the first boss, right? You don't need to be the, e the easy to win person. Uh, to quote Patrick Rothfuss, I want a beautiful game. And to quote Will Wheaton, I don't want to be a dick. And that's, that's, this is really it. Uh, we all want more people to play games with. And we all want to have a good playgroup. And it's all of our responsibilities to make sure that the new and the young players feel welcomed and comfortable joining into a new playgroup. Winning isn't on the list of my rules. You know, for, for me, if winning is a requirement to have fun, then in your average game of Oathbreaker or Commander, you know... Only 25% of the players are having fun. And what games keep getting played when 75% of the people playing them aren't having fun? None of them. None of them at all. I, you know. So, those are the rules. Invite new players. Make sure they're having fun. And be somebody they want to play again. And... You know, all this is really just me trying to remind myself why I got into the hobby at the beginning of 2021 when the hobby is hard to do. You know, you can scrape by with the simulators. You can scrape by with tabletop. You know, I've played games with people who are in currently different states, which is awesome. But it's, you know, it's also a good idea and it's a good time to just make sure everyone... Everyone is clear. My table is a safe space for players. And that, that's a mark of pride for me. Um, they're probably not a safe space for your wheat or your planeswalker. But it is safe for you. And that's, that's key. So, enough rambling. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys think I could do to expand on this. Um, if there's anything in here uh, you want to civilly debate we can we can talk uh tournaments are something if you guys want me to talk about this again we'll talk some other time because tournaments change those keys yet because they're you'll have new tournament players but you're not likely to have new players so that's it everybody nice short and simple See you all next time.